We select mango varieties based on several characteristics. Does the tree grow fast? Is the tree productive? Does the tree produce regularly? And of course, does the fruit taste good? Gary mango is about the best mango you're ever gonna taste, but it's known to take a year off. Bite into a pickering, it'll blow your head right off your shoulders, but it's known to be a slow growing tree. Same thing with the Julie mango. Then there's the run of the mill mangoes you find at the supermarket, which grow and produce like weeds, but the flavor, you could take it or leave it. Wouldn't it be great if there was a variety that maximized all three? I went to see Julian at Lara Farms Nursery and I asked him that very question. And he said, come with me. And he showed me this tree right here, the Edward Kent. Turns out back in the 1960s, a botanist named Dr. Young at the University of Florida had the same idea I did. He took the Kent variety mango, which is sought after for its flavor, but also happens to be highly productive and highly consistent. And he crossbred it with the Edward variety, which is prized for its flavor, but is also known to be a little weak on the productivity side. Let's take a trip over to Lara Farms and let Julian tell us how the Edward Kent was developed. I came to Julian and I said, Julian, can you sell me a tree that has both delicious mangoes and is very, very productive? He said, I got just the thing for you, which is this one. What is this, okay. Julian? Now, there's, there's a little backstory with okay. this guy, okay? All right. Now, this this is a, a, a hybrid, a mix of the Edward mango, which is considered the finest tasting, you know, of, of, of all the mangoes, if you like classic flavored mangoes. And the Kent, which is also another classic mango. Very popular. Very a lot of my popular. customers love Kent. It, it's, it's, a, it's pretty much what they call a, um, a household name. Yeah. The Kent. Yeah. So, workhorse. Yeah. So yeah. Wor it's a workhorse. It's made money here in Homestead for decades and it's fiberless, super productive, it's delicious mango. Yeah. It's an excellent, excellent mango. But these new generations are, you know, have more of a, what they call a um, unique flavor. Yeah. Like coconut mixed with mango, peaches mixed with mango. Yeah. But if you want something that tastes like mango, this is the guy. He's now the, the best of both worlds. You got Edward and you got Kent mixed together. And the Edward, is the Edward as productive as a Kent? No. Typically? No, Edward, you know, unfortunately, is not a good producer. It's a shy producer, is what they call but it. But it's a delicious mango. But it's phenomenal mango, flat seed, no fiber, dense, sweet. If only there was a way to take a delicious mango like Edward right. and make it productive like Kent, wouldn't that be awesome? That was the, the, the scientific revolution that, that, that occurred to this guy. Um, I think his last name was Young and uh, he did a hybrid between the Edward and the Kent, get the, the quality of the Kent and the productivity of the Kent. And now how do you do a hybrid? Because these trees are just out here in the open air. How do I know pollen from that tree over there fertilize this oh. tree here? How the heck do you ensure how do you, how that do you you're blending? Pollen? Yes, how yes, you how would you do that? Yeah, I guess, okay, when the, when the tree starts to flower, um, before the flowers open, you cover it in a, in a plastic, well, not really a plastic, maybe a paper bag. Uh -huh. That way it's more, it can circulate more. It can, yeah. It can breathe more. Yeah. So you cover the flower, that one panicle, with uh, a paper bag. You seal it so it doesn't get raped. Okay. But another pollen that's right. floating in the air. Just any old random. Yeah, it's mango, mango season, tree. everybody's flowering, and all the pollen, you can't see it, but all the, all the pollen is floating around, and the bees and the flies um, pollinate mangoes too well not really bees more like flies and yep. other small yep. insect beetles yep. um but anyhow um you cover up the flower okay and then when you when you um inspect it every once in a while to see if the flower is open uh -huh. that's when you go grab a branch of of whatever variety of mango that you've chosen yeah so in this case it will be the kent so this was the edward tree started to flower you go get flower of a kent in this case and you bring it you just shake it on there just shake it on there and you you purposely blend the Edward variety with the Kent variety. Right. Then you wait, you plant you, you wait till it you fruits. Cover it back up. You cover it back you cover up. Cover it back up so it doesn't get raped by you know anybody else afterwards. Yeah. Okay. And then because this it can be pollinated by the wind. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then when you see be yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just by the wind it can yeah. be pollinated. So when you when you check up on it and you see that it has the little mango, the little baby mango balls that look like sweet peas. Yeah. Uh, little little baby little balls. Yeah. Um, that's when you take off the bag and whatever you start spraying copper on it to protect it. And when that 
fruit grows, the seed inside that fruit yeah. is the hybrid. So you, so that particular piece of fruit you eat it, that's not the hybrid. That fruit is whatever was on the tree, but the seed inside is the hybrid. That's the baby. And then you plant that seed. You plant that seed and you hope it grows up to be a doctor instead of a delinquent. <laughs> yeah. And when you turn like, wow, this is a doctor, this is delicious. Yeah. You know, you waited maybe, you know, eight, nine, 10 years to, yeah. to for it to make fruit. When you yeah. plant that seed, sometimes it takes eight years, sometimes it takes 12 years, sure. or, you know? Kind of like a person, mm -hmm. you know, it takes as long as a person. Mangoes take as long as people yeah. to reach sexual maturity, yeah. believe it or not. And so do avocados. Yeah. Some earlier than others, some later. Yeah. So in this case, <clears throat> you plant the seed. The mango tastes the same. You get the mango that, that you hand pollinated. You 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 eat it and think, oh, it's the same thing. It's an Edward. There's nothing different right. about it. But that seed is has the, 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 the hybrid. Of the two. Of the two. Yeah. And then this particular one grew and it did it had the productivity of the kent yeah. the flavor of the edward yeah. and a new variety of tree was born yeah. Yeah. and it's going to be planted in my grove in a couple of days yeah and this was planted at, at the grove at the university of florida they have a research center back here uh-huh and that was this tree was planted back in 1972. okay this is that's 50 a, that's so about the as, time i was planted yeah it's as old as us <laughs> yeah so so imagine this hybrid must have taken place 10 years before that. Right, yes. So we're talking about 1962. So this it occurred like to, to, to Mr. 75 Young. 75 years in the making, yeah, a tree like years. this. Yeah. Could it be 75, maybe? Yeah. Ish, I mean, 60, you know. 65, 60. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. I figure they didn't get it right the first time, you know. Yeah. This, this was going around as Edward Kent number 14 for a long time. Uh huh. And then um, out of homage, someone named it Tebow. Okay. Got an for Tim, Tim Tebow because it's University of Florida, right? Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Right. And then also it's referred to Young as of late. Because um, he's the scientist, the botanist who... The botanist who did it. Fantastic. All so right. That's that's the backstory. All right. Well, let's load this sucker up. Come on, Tan. It's time to do your job with us, buddy. Julian, you seem to know an awful lot about this stuff. Why do you know so much about this? Um, well, I've been doing this for, believe it or not, uh, a couple of decades. <laughs> Just about all your life, right? Uh, pretty much. At least a good 25 years yeah. of my life. And where have you been doing it? Uh, I've been doing it here. I started off with my dad. Um, we, uh, he opened this place up, Lara Farms Nursery. Um, now, uh, I'm calling it LaraFarmsMiami.com. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, we're... We're trying to be your source for tropical fruit trees online and uh, with a wide variety of different, you know, different mangoes. Uh, just on the website, we have a hundred different mangoes on the website. Just different mango varieties. Different types of mangoes wow. from all over the world. Yeah. Um, you just go on there, yeah. look at the list, and it's, let me tell you, it's impressive. So when, when my viewers reach out to me and say, hey, can I buy a tree off of you? And I say, no, because I don't sell them, and I can refer them to you at LaraFarmsMiami.com. Is that okay? Thank you so much. I'm yeah. glad it's okay because I've been doing that for the last year. <laughs> so yeah. if you if you want to ever get a tree or even some rare fruit every now and again, right? Correct. Uh, Julian Correct. also sells the fruit out here. And once again, that's LaraFarmsMiami.com. So when I was given the opportunity to get a tree that gives me mangoes that taste like the Edward with the productivity of the Kent, I couldn't say no. And since this guy's so big, it won't be but a season or two that I'll be selling these Edward Kents on our website, which is guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. You can get yourself a box of mangoes, a box of avocados. We got mame, sapodilla, longans, monstera deliciosa. And if you want to look really cool while you're eating it, get yourself a sleepy lizard hat or t-shirt. I got to go out and start digging a big hole. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.